Ethan, a 10-year-old boy, had bright eyes and an easy smile, despite the tough life on the streets of a bustling city. He and his mother Pamela made a small corner under the river bridge their home. With worn blankets spread over cardboard, they formed a fragile barrier against the cold pavement. Pamela, a woman whose face was marked by time yet still held traces of her former beauty, spent her days looking for odd jobs. From washing dishes in a diner to helping clean local shops, every penny earned was a victory. Ethan, my love, she often said, holding his small hands in hers, always remember that our situation does not define our dignity. Being poor does not mean being less. Ethan, watching the hurried passers-by, learned more from his mother's actions than her words. She always thanked them with a genuine smile for any help they received and never took anything that wasn't directly offered to them. Mom, why do you always say thank you so loudly? Ethan would ask curiously. Pamela, with a smile, replied, Because gratitude, Ethan, should be as big as the hope we have, and our hope is huge, isn't it? Ethan nodded, his smile widening, reflecting the hope his mother spoke of. Pamela's health began to decline during a particularly harsh winter. Her persistent coughs and fever did not subside, despite Ethan's attempts to warm his mother with additional blankets. On a cold March day while huddled under the bridge, Pamela called Ethan to her side. With a voice weak but full of tenderness, she said, Ethan, my love, promise me you'll continue to be strong and do the right thing, even when I'm not here. Ethan, holding back tears and his mother's hand, nodded. I promise, Mom, I'll be strong for both of us, he replied, trying to hide the fear growing inside him. Pamela smiled sadly, stroking her son's face with a trembling hand. That night, as the soft sound of the river accompanied the silence, Pamela peacefully passed away in her sleep, leaving Ethan alone. In the days that followed, Ethan's world became even more uncertain and lonely. With no one to protect him or guide him, he found himself wandering the streets, carrying only the memories of his mother and the values she had taught him. Ethan found a way to earn some money by cleaning windshields at traffic lights. Each car that stopped was a survival opportunity. He approached the vehicles with hesitation but always with hope, repeating to himself his mother's words about dignity. Can I clean your windshield? Ethan would ask with a voice he tried to keep steady. Some drivers ignored him, others nodded, and a few offered a smile along with some coins. At the end of the day, with the coins he managed to gather, Ethan would buy something to eat, always thanking aloud, as his mother had taught him, keeping gratitude and hope alive in his young heart. On a sunny morning, while Ethan was cleaning windshields at the busy city intersection, his eyes caught the small trembling figure of a girl standing at the corner. She looked around, visibly lost and scared, with tears marking her face. Ethan, remembering the times he and his mother felt lost and alone, felt an immediate impulse to help. Setting aside his squeegee, he approached her cautiously. Hi, my name is Ethan. You seem lost. Do you need help? The girl looked at him with big, frightened eyes and nodded her head, sobbing. I... I don't know where my mom is. I lost her, she said, her voice trembling with each word. Ethan smiled gently, trying to reassure her. Don't worry. We'll find your mom together. What's her name? The girl, named Lucy, grabbed Ethan's hand, and together they began to walk through the crowded sidewalks. Ethan asked people if they had seen a woman looking for her daughter, describing Lucy's clothes to aid the search. They spent several hours together, and during that time, Ethan cared for Lucy with the same compassion his mother had taught him. He distracted her by making up stories on the spot, making her laugh and forget her fear. Finally, after much searching and questioning, they spotted a woman running toward them, her face flooded with relief and gratitude. My dear Lucy, the woman exclaimed, wrapping her daughter in a tight hug. She turned to Ethan, tears of thanks in her eyes. Thank you so much for taking care of her. I don't know what I would do if something bad had happened, she said, clearly relieved to find her daughter safe and sound. Ethan, feeling a warmth in his heart for having been able to help, just nodded and smiled. It was a pleasure to help. I know what it's like to be lost, he replied, remembering his mother's words about helping others whenever possible. This good deed of Ethan's reinforced how, despite poverty and tough days, his heart remained good and pure. 
In his daily work at the traffic lights, Ethan faced resistance and sometimes hostility from some drivers. With a squeegee in hand, he approached the stopped cars, offering a shy smile and the same polite question. Can I clean your windshield for a few coins? Many drivers simply shook their heads without looking at him. Others were less kind, saying things like, Get out of here, kid. You're blocking my view. One afternoon, a particularly irritated driver yelled out the window, No, and don't ask me again! The harsh tone and harsh words made Ethan step back, a bit shaken. Taking a deep breath and trying to hide his hurt, he murmured to himself, remembering his mother's always optimistic advice. Keep trying, Ethan. Things will get better. Despite these unpleasant moments, Ethan did not let them break his spirit. He remembered the kind people he met, like the lady who, the previous week, had given him a warm smile and some extra coins, saying, You're doing a great job, dear. Keep up the strength. These small kindnesses rekindled his hope and encouraged him to continue, firmly believing that despite the challenges, there was goodness in the world and that things really could get better. On a cloudy afternoon while Ethan was cleaning windshields on the busy avenue, he approached a luxury car, a model that rarely stopped at the traffic light where he worked. Inside the vehicle, a man watched the street absorbed in his thoughts. Without hesitation, Ethan offered his usual smile and asked politely, May I clean your windshield, sir? The man in the car looked at Ethan, his eyes reflecting momentary surprise before softening into an expression of understanding. Sure, go ahead, kid he replied, pressing the button to lower the window a bit. As Ethan worked, the man watched attentively. What's your name? He asked, interested. My name is Ethan, sir, Ethan replied, continuing his work. The man nodded, a slight smile crossing his face. I'm Roger Barton, and how did you end up here, Ethan? The conversation flowed naturally as Ethan finished cleaning the glass. Roger Barton, a successful surgeon, had risen from a humble past much like Ethan's current situation. Despite his success, Roger felt increasingly surrounded by false and self-interested people, a painful contrast to the sincerity and simplicity of the young man in front of him. Recognizing an echo of his own youth in Ethan, Roger felt an impulse to do more for the boy, to offer him a chance, as he had wished someone would have done for him. Seeing Ethan, a boy so young facing the adversities of the street, Roger felt a twinge of shock and compassion. As he watched Ethan skillfully maneuver the squeegee over the windshield, memories of his own days of struggle vividly emerged in his mind. Aren't you too young to be working here, Ethan? Asked Roger, his voice laden with concern as he watched the boy through the now clean windshield. Ethan paused for a moment, looking at Roger with a mix of resignation and maturity unexpected for his age. I need to support myself, sir. I don't have much choice, he replied, resuming his work with a soft sigh. Roger, still impressed and moved by the boy's situation, opened his wallet and took out a larger bill than usual for these services. Here, take this. You did an excellent job, he said, extending his hand with the bill. Watching Ethan accept the money with a look of gratitude, Roger felt a surge of determination. It was clear to him that this encounter would not be the last, and something inside him knew that he needed to offer more than just a momentary financial reward. Roger watched Ethan for a moment, noticing how the boy seemed fragile yet determined. Feeling a strong need to do more for the young man, he made a quick decision. Ethan, have you had lunch today? He asked, his voice laden with genuine kindness. Ethan looked surprised, shaking his head. No, sir, I usually eat later, he replied, somewhat hesitantly. How about you come with me to a nearby restaurant? You deserve a good meal, Roger offered his tone leaving no room for refusal. He saw a moment of hesitation in Ethan's eyes, followed by a timid nod. I... I really appreciate it, sir. That would be amazing, said Ethan, a glint of excitement evident in his voice. Together, they walked the blocks from the traffic light to the local restaurant, a cozy place known for its generous homemade portions. Along the way, Roger tried to break the ice, asking about things Ethan liked to do besides his work at the traffic lights. Ethan, initially shy, began to open up, talking about how he dreamed of starting to study. Roger listened attentively, becoming increasingly convinced he was doing the right thing. As they settled into a discreet table in the restaurant, 
Roger ordered the best on the menu for Ethan, who observed everything with curious and somewhat dazzled eyes. As soon as the food arrived, Roger took the opportunity to learn more about Ethan's story, asking about his life. Tell me about yourself, Ethan, Roger began, pushing a plate of hot food towards the boy. Ethan, with a sad smile, spoke fondly. I grew up on the streets with my mother. She always worked hard, but she got sick and passed away and I was left alone. She always said that being good and honest was more important than having money. I try to remember that every day. Hearing this, Roger felt a pang in his heart, the gravity of Ethan's situation weighing on him. Do you have dreams, Ethan? Something you'd like to do or be? Roger asked, watching Ethan savor his meal with an appetite that revealed his hunger not just for food, but for care and attention. Ethan paused for a moment, thoughtful. I like stories. Maybe one day I could be a writer or even a teacher, he replied with cautious hope. But first, I need to go to school to learn to read and write. As the conversation between Roger and Ethan deepened, Roger realized how different this dialogue was from those he had in his daily life. There were no ulterior motives or superficiality. It was a genuine and sincere exchange, something he rarely experienced in his routine surrounded by people whose interests rarely transcended the material. Impressed with Ethan's maturity and kindness, Roger felt an even greater desire to help the boy. Leaning over the table with a serious and friendly look, Roger made an offer that he knew could change the boy's life. Ethan, I see how special you are and how much you deserve a chance for a better life. How about coming to live with me for a few days? My home is safe and comfortable. You could have some time to rest and think about your future without worrying about where you will sleep or what you will eat. Ethan looked at Roger his eyes brimming with emotion. He was used to fighting alone, and the offer touched his heart in a way he hadn't expected. After a brief moment of hesitation, moved by the trust Roger inspired in him, Ethan responded with a trembling voice, I... I would be very grateful, sir. Really, I don't know how to thank you. Roger smiled, waving his hand reassuringly. You don't need to thank me, Ethan. Just accepting is enough. Let's do this together, right? I'll help you find a way so that one day you can achieve your dreams. This promise of security and support was more than Ethan could have hoped for, and he felt a wave of relief and hope. Together they finished their meal, each contemplating the beginning of a new journey that would start as soon as they left the restaurant. When Roger and Ethan arrived at Roger's large and elegant house, the atmosphere shifted. The house, with its wide windows and modern furnishings, seemed like a castle to Ethan, who had never been in such a luxurious place. However, the reception was not as warm as the interiors. Mary Barton, Roger's girlfriend, was waiting for them in the living room, a clear expression of displeasure on her face. Mary, with her perfectly styled hair and wearing expensive clothes, looked at Ethan with a mix of surprise and disapproval. As soon as Roger introduced Ethan and explained the situation, Mary frowned. Roger, can we talk for a moment? In private? she asked, her tone indicating urgency and discomfort. In a corner of the room, away from Ethan, Mary whispered, visibly upset, What are you thinking, Roger? Why did you bring this boy into our home? This isn't a shelter. Roger, maintaining his composure, replied firmly, Mary, Ethan is a boy who needs help. I couldn't just leave him on the street. We have enough space and resources to offer him a safe place temporarily. It's the least we can do. Mary crossed her arms, clearly unconvinced. What about our privacy? And what if he isn't as you think? You're putting our safety at risk for a whim, she argued, her voice full of frustration. Roger, however, remained resolute. It's not a whim, Mary. It's humanity. I grew up in tough circumstances too, remember? I'm just trying to give Ethan the chance I had. Please, try to understand. Mary had a complicated history marked by a rise from the humblest layers of society to her current luxury. Before meeting Roger, she struggled to make ends meet, dreaming of a life of comfort and security. However, as she got involved with Roger, her life transformed radically, and over time, the memories of her modest beginnings faded, giving way to a new persona shaped by luxury and ease. Now, dressed in designer clothes and attending high-level social events, Mary had developed a distorted view of value and status. She quickly became accustomed to the comfort and conveniences Roger's money provided, 
and with that, a certain coldness towards those she considered beneath her set in. Seeing Ethan, a street boy, as a living reminder of her past that she wanted to forget, Mary felt a mix of repulsion and fear. To her, Ethan represented not just a threat to her comfortable life, but a mirror of her own past that she preferred not to face. He doesn't belong here, Roger. Don't you see he could bring trouble for us? Mary insisted, her voice tinged with disdain. People like him can be unpredictable, and I don't want the past I left behind to invade the present. Roger, sensing the contempt in Mary's words, felt a pang of disappointment. Mary, remember where we came from. Everyone deserves compassion and help. Ethan reminds us that we should extend a hand, not withdraw it, he replied, hoping to reignite some spark of empathy he knew she once possessed. However, Mary just looked out through the windows framing her secure life, unable to see beyond the world she had built around herself. After the tense discussion between Roger and Mary, Ethan, who had remained on the sidelines trying to make himself invisible, couldn't help but feel a wave of fear and uncertainty. He was aware that his presence had caused a conflict, and the idea of being the reason for a discord between Roger and Mary weighed on his young heart. Sensing Ethan's unease, Roger approached him, placing a comforting hand on his shoulder. Ethan, I know all this must be a lot for you, began Roger, his voice soft trying to convey security. But I want you to know that you're safe here. I don't want you to worry about adult discussions, okay? Ethan looked up at Roger, his eyes searching for some sign that it wasn't just an empty promise. But what if Mrs. Mary doesn't want me here? I don't want to cause trouble for you, he said, his voice trembling reflecting his internal conflict. Roger crouched down to Ethan's level, looking him directly in the eyes. You're not causing any trouble. Sometimes people are afraid of changes or face their own internal battles. That's not your fault. I made a choice to help you, and it's a choice I'd make again. You are welcome in this house, and that's what matters. Ethan, still hesitant but comforted by Roger's words, nodded slightly, agreeing to stay. All right, I'll stay. Thank you for everything, he murmured, allowing himself to feel a bit more secure, recognizing the sincerity in Roger's commitment. Roger smiled, relieved to see Ethan more at ease. Great, let's make this a good experience for all of us, he said, determined to make the boys stay as comfortable as possible. As the days passed in Roger's house, Ethan began to adapt to his new life, a reality he could only have imagined in dreams before. Each morning he woke up in a room of his own, with a soft bed and warm covers, a stark contrast to the cold nights under the bridge. Roger made sure Ethan had everything he needed. Here are some new clothes for you, Roger said one day, handing Ethan a stack of clean, well-kept clothes. Ethan touched the soft fabric, a shy smile forming on his face. Thank you, I... I've never had new clothes before, he replied, his voice laden with gratitude and still a hint of disbelief. Meals were another moment of joy and novelty for Ethan. Roger made sure they sat together at the table where nutritious and tasty dishes were served. During these meals, they talked about various topics and Roger continued to encourage Ethan to share his ideas and dreams. What do you think about trying to make a pizza together this weekend? Roger suggested on one occasion, wanting to involve Ethan in normal household activities. Ethan, gradually feeling more like part of a family, eagerly accepted. I'd love to learn how to cook. My mom sometimes talked about how nice it was to make our own food, he said, recalling the simple but happy moments he had with his mother. This new routine brought Ethan not just physical comfort, but also a sense of security and belonging he had never experienced before. He was beginning to understand that his life could have a new beginning, full of possibilities, all thanks to Roger's generosity and kindness. As the days passed, Roger introduced the idea of enriching Ethan's education. Ethan, how about we start some reading and writing lessons? It's a fundamental skill and I'd be happy to teach you, Roger proposed one day after dinner as they cleared the dishes. Ethan, though a bit nervous about learning something so complex, was equally excited. I would really like that, Roger. My mom always said that knowing how to read and write opens up new worlds, he replied, his eyes shining with the prospect of unlocking these worlds. At first, the learning sessions were challenging. Ethan struggled to form letters and untangle words into comprehensible sounds. Sitting at the kitchen table with a pencil in hand, he often furrowed his brow in concentration, 
his initial attempts leaving him frustrated. I can't do this, Roger. It's too hard, he lamented during one of those moments. Roger, always patient, gently encouraged him. It's normal to find it difficult at the beginning, Ethan. Every skill takes time to develop. Let's try again, slowly, he instructed, guiding Ethan's hand over the paper. See, like this, we form the letters. Each one has its shape and sound. With practice, you'll know all of them. As Ethan progressed in his reading and writing lessons, his dedication to his studies only increased. Each afternoon, after they finished their daily tasks, he and Roger sat in the spacious home library, a place filled with shelves that touched the ceiling, loaded with books of all kinds. The soft light of a desk lamp illuminated their notebooks, while Roger patiently guided him through new books, helping him decipher more complicated words and encouraging him to form his own sentences. You're doing very well, Ethan, Roger praised, watching the boy carefully jot down his lessons in a new notebook. Look, you're already starting to write small stories. That's excellent. Encouraged by Roger, Ethan began to explore the library on his own. One day, as he browsed the shelves, a book with a colorful cover of a ship facing a storm caught his attention. Intrigued, he pulled the book from the shelf and flipped through the pages. It was a story of maritime adventure filled with pirates and hidden treasures. Fascinated, Ethan brought the book to Roger. Can I read this one, Roger? He asked, his eyes gleaming with curiosity and excitement. Of course, Ethan, that's one of my favorites too, Roger replied with a smile. If there's a word you don't know, we can look it up together. Thus began Ethan's love for adventure books. He spent hours immersed in stories of bravery and discovery, each new page fueling his imagination and desire to learn more. At night, before going to bed, he shared his favorite stories with Roger, discussing the characters and the places they visited. These stories enriched his vocabulary and expanded his worldview, inspiring him to dream about his own adventures. Reading became a window to endless possibilities, and Ethan embraced each learning opportunity with growing enthusiasm. As Ethan became more integrated into Roger's life and showed remarkable growth, Mary, who watched from a distance, felt her discomfort increase. The boy's presence, which initially seemed temporary, now appeared to be a permanent change, causing increasing insecurity in Mary. She saw the bond between Roger and Ethan strengthening each day, which sparked in her an irrational fear of losing control over the luxurious life she had with Roger. One quiet afternoon, driven by a mix of jealousy and fear, Mary acted. Knowing that Roger deeply valued a piece of jewelry inherited from his mother, she saw an opportunity to execute her plan. With silent steps, Mary entered Roger's room, her eyes fixed on the small jewelry box he kept on top of the dresser. She delicately opened the box, removing a gold ring encrusted with a stunning emerald. Then, Mary headed to Ethan's room, where the boy kept his few possessions in a simple drawer. With a quick glance to ensure she was still alone, she slipped the ring into the drawer among some of Ethan's clothes, burying it under t-shirts and pants. Her plan was clear. Later, she would accuse Ethan of theft, suggesting that he had taken the ring for himself or to sell, taking advantage of Roger's kindness. After planting the jewel, Mary returned to her room. She knew that if discovered, her actions could have serious consequences, but the possibility of removing Ethan from the house seemed to justify her behavior. With the plan in motion, Mary awaited the opportune moment to discover the theft, irreversibly altering the course of the relationship between Roger and the boy. The atmosphere in the house became tense when Roger noticed the missing heirloom. With a heavy heart, he searched everywhere, hoping he had just placed it in an unusual spot. Then, seizing the moment, Mary intervened with a calculated accusation. Roger, I didn't want to mention this, but I saw Ethan going through your things. He seemed very interested in that jewelry box, said Mary, her voice tinged with false reluctance. Confused and concerned, Roger called Ethan for a talk in the living room. Ethan, do you know anything about a ring that disappeared from my room? It's very important to me, he asked, trying to remain calm. Ethan, completely startled and confused by the accusation, shook his head vigorously. No, Mr. Roger, I would never enter your room without permission. I didn't take anything, he said, his voice trembling with fear. Determined to push her plan forward, Mary quickly intervened. Let's just check, 
for peace of mind. Why don't we look in Ethan's drawer, she suggested, leading the way to the boy's room. When Mary opened the drawer and, with a theatrical look, pulled out the ring hidden among Ethan's clothes, the boy felt his world collapse. But I didn't put that there. I swear, Roger, I didn't do it, exclaimed Ethan, despair filling his eyes. In a panic and feeling betrayed, Ethan ran out of the house, unable to face the situation. He didn't know where to go, but fear and confusion propelled him to flee from the only place he had begun to call home. Roger, disturbed by Ethan's desperate reaction, decided to go after the boy. He found Ethan sitting on a bench near the house, with his knees pulled up to his chest and sobbing quietly. P please Mr. Roger, I swear I didn't do any of this, said Ethan between sobs, noticing Roger approaching. He looked up, his eyes red and swollen from crying. I would never steal from you. You've helped me so much. Roger sat beside Ethan on the cold bench, his expression softening upon seeing the boy's state. I know, Ethan. I know you didn't do this, said Roger, placing a comforting arm around the boy's shoulders. I'm sorry Mary put you through this. Relieved but still shaken, Ethan allowed himself to be comforted. But why would she do this? he asked, confused and still trying to understand the situation. Roger sighed, weighing his words. Some people do bad things for reasons we can't always understand. But I'll sort this out, Ethan. Don't worry. With renewed assurance that he needed to act, Roger helped Ethan to stand up. Let's go back home. I have a plan, and I need you to trust me, he said determinedly. They then walked back to the house, where Roger planned to expose Mary's true intentions and ensure she could no longer harm Ethan or anyone else under his roof. After returning home with Ethan, Roger acted quickly to execute his plan. He discreetly contacted his bank via a phone call, requesting the blocking of all credit and debit cards in Mary's possession. Roger knew this would trigger an immediate reaction from her, but it was necessary to bring to light the truth about her conduct. It didn't take long for Mary to feel the impact of this action. During an attempt to make a purchase at an expensive boutique, her card was repeatedly declined, causing her embarrassment and confusion. Furious and embarrassed, she returned home and confronted Roger as soon as she entered the door. Roger, what's happening? All my cards have been blocked. Do you know anything about this? She demanded, her voice elevated and laden with irritation. Roger, calm and firm, faced Mary directly. Yes, I blocked your cards, Mary. We need to talk about some things, he said, maintaining his composure. Mary, still furious, replied, How dare you? You're treating me like a criminal. Mary, I don't want someone by my side who only thinks about money, said Roger, his disappointment evident. Moreover, I discovered something much more serious. I had installed security cameras where I keep the family jewels, and I know it was you who took the ring and placed it in Ethan's things. After Roger's revelation and confronted with the consequences of her actions, Mary was completely speechless. The truth of her actions, exposed so coldly, left her paralyzed. The gravity of her mistakes finally hit her, collapsing the facade of indignation she tried to maintain. Roger, seeing the confusion and despair in her eyes, knew it was time to end this painful chapter. Mary, you need to leave, he said with a firm voice but not devoid of sadness. We can't continue together, not after all this. Mary, with tears welling up in her eyes, slowly shook her head, recognizing the justice in Roger's words. I, I really messed up, didn't I? She murmured, her voice choked with emotion. I'm sorry, Roger. I never wanted, never thought it would come to this. Roger nodded, the sadness in his gaze reflecting the end of something that, at one time, had been precious. I know, Mary but now it's better for both of us if you move on. Without the strength to argue, or even to ask for another chance, Mary gathered some of her things, each movement laden with a weight she never expected to feel. Tears ran freely down her face as she walked to the door, one last look at Roger and the house she thought was her ultimate security. Silently, she closed the door behind her, leaving behind a life she knew she could never have again. The reality of her choices and their consequences settled deeply as she walked away, alone and full of regrets. After resolving the situation with Mary, Roger turned his attention to a more promising and positive matter, solidifying his bond with Ethan. Feeling a renewed responsibility and a deep desire to ensure the boy's well-being, 
he decided that the next step would be to formalize their relationship through adoption. Sitting in his office, Roger picked up the phone and dialed the number of a family law attorney. Hello, I'm Roger Barton. I need your help to start an adoption process, he explained as soon as the call was answered. The attorney, recognizing the seriousness and urgency in Roger's voice, responded promptly. Of course, Mr. Barton. We can schedule a meeting to discuss all the details and better understand the situation. Adoption is a significant process, and we're here to support you every step of the way. Roger felt a wave of relief and determination. Thank you. That means a lot to me. I want to do everything the right way. Ethan deserves a family and a stable home, said Roger, his tone reflecting the firm commitment he felt. After hanging up, Roger called Ethan into his office. The boy entered, a bit anxious, not knowing what to expect. Ethan, I've made a decision, began Roger, looking into the boy's eyes. I want you to be officially part of my family. I'm going to start the adoption process. What do you think? Ethan, surprised and moved, took a moment to absorb the words. His eyes filled with tears, and a smile spread across his face. You... you want to be my dad? He asked, his voice trembling with emotion. Yes, Ethan, I want to be your dad, confirmed Roger, extending his arms. Ethan ran into a hug, feeling a security and love he never thought possible. After months of anticipation and procedures, the adoption process finally reached its conclusion. Roger and Ethan, both anxious and hopeful, attended court on the appointed day for the final hearing. The judge, after carefully reviewing all the documents and hearing the testimonies, officially granted the adoption. Mr. Barton, it is clear from your commitment and the circumstances presented that Ethan's well-being is assured with you. Therefore, I am pleased to officially recognize you as Ethan's father, declared the judge, a benevolent smile framing his words. Roger, relieved and moved, squeezed Ethan's hand, who was by his side. Thank you, Your Honor. This means everything to us, said Roger, his voice choked with emotion. Ethan, unable to contain his happiness, looked up at Roger with bright eyes. Dad, we did it, he said, his voice small and trembling with joy. Roger hugged Ethan tightly, feeling a mix of relief and joy overflowing in his heart. Yes, son, we did it. Now we are officially a family, responded Roger, holding Ethan even closer. Both felt that a new chapter of their lives was beginning, a chapter full of promises and new adventures together. As they left the courthouse hand in hand, the sun shone high in the sky, reflecting the new beginning in their lives. Roger felt a deep sense of responsibility and paternal love, while Ethan absorbed the security and affection of having a father. After the adoption, Roger enrolled Ethan in a local school, determined to give the boy all the opportunities he deserved. However, Ethan's entry into the school environment brought new challenges. As a new student and with a past on the streets, Ethan felt the weight of prejudice and difficulty in acceptance from some classmates and even some teachers. In the first few days, Ethan walked through the school corridors feeling the curious and sometimes critical gazes of other students. Whispers and murmurs were frequent, and he could hear snippets of conversations questioning his origin and his appearance. Where did he come from? He is different from us, were murmurs that reached his ears, leaving him insecure and uncomfortable. One afternoon, after a particularly difficult class where a group of students had mocked his former life on the streets, Ethan met Roger at the school gate, his expression clearly downcast. Roger immediately noticed the change in his son's mood and asked, Ethan, what happened today? You seem troubled. Ethan sighed, hesitant to share his difficulties, but the trust he had in Roger encouraged him to speak. Dad, some classmates were laughing at me because of where I lived before. They said things that hurt me. Roger listened attentively, his expression becoming a mix of sadness and determination. Ethan, I'm sorry you're going through this, but remember, your past is just a part of who you are. It doesn't define everything you can be. You are smart, kind, and strong. These people don't know the true story of how incredible you are. Encouraged by Roger's words, Ethan wiped away a tear and nodded. Thanks, Dad. I'll try to remember that. I won't let them make me feel less than I am. With Roger's continued support, Ethan began to face the challenges at school with more confidence. He worked hard, both academically and in building bridges with his classmates. 
Gradually, he began to make friends and show everyone that his past did not determine his future. The life lessons he learned from Roger and his own resilience helped him overcome obstacles and find his place in the school community. As time passed, Ethan began to stand out at school, not only academically but also as a gentle and inspiring presence among his peers. Through his determination and Roger's unwavering support, he overcame the initial challenges of prejudice and began to be recognized for his true qualities. One day, after a literature class in which students were encouraged to write their own short stories, Ethan surprised everyone. His teacher, Mr. Eleanor, upon reading Ethan's text, was particularly impressed with the maturity and creativity of his writing. Ethan, this story is extraordinary. You have a special talent for writing. How did you come up with such an engaging plot? Praised the teacher with a sparkle of admiration in his eyes. Ethan, a bit shy but visibly proud, responded, Thank you, Mr. Eleanor. I like to imagine stories where people overcome difficulties. I guess it comes a bit from what I've lived through. His talent did not go unnoticed, and soon Ethan became known at the school for his story of overcoming and for his ability to enchant through words. He began to contribute regularly to the school newspaper and participated in writing contests, where his stories, often inspired by his own life, touched the hearts of students and teachers. Ethan, your latest story in the school newspaper was amazing. How do you write so well? Asked a classmate, Elizabeth, who had previously had doubts about him. Ethan smiled, grateful for the change in attitude. I just write what I feel and what I hope for the world, he said, always humble, but confident in his newly found voice. This evolution not only solidified his reputation as an exemplary student, but also helped him create deeper bonds with his peers, transforming old prejudices into respect and admiration. With each story he wrote, Ethan proved that his intelligence and kind heart were powerful forces, capable of changing perceptions and enriching the lives of those around him. Encouraged by the constant support of his teachers and Roger, Ethan decided to embark on an even more ambitious project than his short stories for friends. After an inspiring conversation with Mr. Eleanor, who suggested that he could have a greater impact with his writing, Ethan began to consider the idea of writing a book. One quiet afternoon at home, while he and Roger were having tea in the kitchen, Ethan shared his thoughts. Dad, I've been thinking about something Mr. Eleanor said. He thinks I should write more, maybe even a book. And I, I think I want to write about something real, something that truly matters, said Ethan, a bit hesitant, seeking approval. Roger looked at Ethan with an encouraging smile. Son, that sounds amazing. What do you think about writing? He asked, genuinely interested. Taking a deep breath, Ethan replied, About my life, Dad. About everything that happened to me, from the streets to finding you. I think it could help people who have been through tough things, too. Roger nodded, deeply moved by Ethan's courage. That's very powerful, son. Your story can inspire and give hope to many people. If that's what you want to do, I fully support you. Let's make it happen, affirmed Roger, offering all the emotional and practical support Ethan would need on this new journey. Motivated by Roger's words and the encouragement from teachers, Ethan began to outline his book. He spent several hours every day after school writing, often continuing late into the night, driven by the need to tell his story to the world. The process of writing about his own life was both therapeutic and challenging, as it revived both painful moments and unexpected joys. As the manuscript took shape, Ethan felt increasingly certain that he was doing something important. He was documenting his own story, while also creating a legacy of resilience and hope. With each completed chapter, he was one step closer to sharing his voice with the world, a voice that started in silence on the streets, but now spoke loudly about overcoming and change. When Ethan completed his book and found a publisher willing to publish it, the expectations were high, but the outcome exceeded all forecasts. After the release, the book quickly caught the attention of the public and critics, becoming a bestseller. Readers were deeply touched by the honesty and strength of Ethan's narrative, which recounted not just his struggle for survival on the streets, but also his emotional journey to becoming part of a loving family and starting a new life. Literary critics praised Ethan's maturity in dealing with such heavy themes with a unique and inspiring perspective. 
In a review highlighted in a major literary newspaper, a critic wrote, Ethan's ability to tell his own story with so much emotion and sincerity is remarkable. His writing reflects not just his struggle, but also an immense willpower that serves as an inspiration to all of us. On a special afternoon after a book signing session where lines of people waited to meet the young author, Roger and Ethan celebrated the success together. You did something incredible, son. Your story is touching hearts and changing minds. I couldn't be more proud of you, said Roger, his face radiant with joy. Ethan, looking at the many people still in line with copies of his book in their hands, felt a wave of gratitude and accomplishment. Thank you, Dad. None of this would have been possible without your support. I just wanted people to understand that it's never too late to change your life, and now it seems like we've managed, he replied, moved. This recognition validated Ethan's talent as a writer and strengthened his desire to continue writing and sharing stories that could motivate and inspire others, regardless of the difficulties they faced. Even though he was very young, Ethan was already seen as an important voice, proof that perseverance and hope can transform lives. After a particularly emotional day, with the success of Ethan's book signing still resonating in their hearts, Roger and Ethan had a quiet moment at home. Sitting comfortably in the living room, with copies of the book scattered across the coffee table, Roger again expressed his pride in what Ethan had achieved. Son, every time I see someone reading your book, I feel immense admiration. You've turned your experiences into something that inspires others. That's incredibly valuable, said Roger, his gaze full of esteem and pride. Ethan, still somewhat surprised by all the recognition, smiled shyly and looked at Roger, his eyes full of gratitude. I could never have done it without you, Dad. You gave me a home, a family, and the courage to tell my story. All of this is thanks to you, he responded, the sincerity in his voice deeply touching Roger. On that quiet night, as comfortable silence filled the room, Roger and Ethan reflected on the twists and turns their lives had taken. The warmth of the home they had built together seemed to envelop them both in an atmosphere of deep reflection and gratitude. Roger, with a life filled with material riches but empty of true connections until Ethan's arrival, found in the boy a son who, although not biologically his, he loved as if he were. Son, you know, before you came along, I had everything money could buy, but something essential was missing. Someone who truly understood and shared life with me in a genuine way, Roger confessed, looking at the small dancing flames in the fireplace. Ethan, listening intently, smiled and replied, And I had a heart full of hopes and dreams, but no safe place to call them home until I found you. You showed me that more important than having things is having someone to share them with. Roger nodded a smile touching his lips as a deeper understanding settled between them. It's funny how life brought us together, isn't it? A man with everything but alone, and a boy with nothing but a big heart. We really needed each other. Yes, we did. And now we're not opposites but compliments. What one lacked, the other brought. You gave me a family and I brought love into your life, said Ethan, the simplicity of his words resonating with a powerful truth. Both reflected on how their differences, far from driving them apart, had intertwined in such a way that it strengthened each of them. Roger, with his world of material abundance, and Ethan, with his wealth of kindness and purity of heart, had together created a life of shared meaning and true love. They realized that despite their vastly different origins and pasts, it was these differences that made them stronger together. It was an unexpected partnership, but deeply transformative for both. As time passed, the lives of Roger and Ethan continued to flourish, each finding success and fulfillment in their respective journeys. Roger, always dedicated to his career, further solidified his reputation as an excellent surgical physician, using his skills to improve the lives of his patients and mentor young doctors. His practice was not just a means of livelihood, but a way to give back to the community, reflecting the values of compassion and care that he and Ethan shared. Meanwhile, Ethan, with his reignited passion for writing, became a renowned author, publishing several books that touched readers' hearts. Each new work was a window into the universal human experiences of struggle, hope, and triumph, inspiring many who faced their own challenges. Every story I write, Ethan said in an interview for a well-known literary magazine, is a love letter to those who, like me, 
needed a light at the end of the tunnel. One quiet evening, as they sat in their garden watching the sunset paint the sky with vibrant colors, Roger looked at Ethan and said, You know, son, I think we really did something special here. Ethan smiled, his gaze lost in the beauty of the twilight. Yes, we did, Dad. We built more than a life together. We built a story that I hope will continue to inspire hearts long after we are gone. And so, amid the tranquility of their achievements and the continuous dreams they still had to fulfill, Roger and Ethan shared a profoundly enriched existence. Not just from the prosperity in their careers, but from the immeasurable wealth of shared love and life, they continued to walk together, two hearts beating in unison against the world's adversities, always reminding each other of the power of resilience and hope. Want access to more stories like this? Click the link in the pinned comment below and find out how.